I talked about this on my program. Tim Pohl's comments following the Club Q shooting was absolutely disgusting, where he claimed with no evidence that Club Q had a grooming event, essentially justifying what this maniac did. But one thing that I didn't notice was his own sister actually called him out, which takes guts, because when you have somebody who is a sibling in the public eye, you know, odds are, if you disagree with them, you just keep your mouth shut. But she's calling out her own brother here. And what she says, I think it shows that Tim Pool is just saying what he needs to say to grift to his far right audience. So she writes, uh, you really think LGBTQ people are grooming children? WTF is wrong with you. Do you not remember working at Mom's Coffee House in Boys Town in Chicago when we were teenagers? That community had some of the most wonderful people we've ever met. So I love this. I really respect her doing this, calling out your own brother, because calling out family on their bullshit is not easy. But I mean, your siblings, you're supposed to call them out on their bullshit. I've got multiple siblings, and I think it's important that we call each other out on our bullshit. But she's saying right here straight up, I mean, what are you talking about? You think that they're grooming people? We know this community. They were pleasant. They were lovely. But this isn't the only instance where she calls out uh, Tim Pool. So um, she's apparently on TikTok, and you can follow her on Twitter here also if you want to. But Rod Weber shared some uh, highlights. Um, she also has a YouTube video, so we'll, we'll check that out too. But just really quick here, there's this question. Okay, well, how do you know she is Tim Pool's sister? So if you scroll down to the end of this thread here, she was actually on Tim Pool's podcast, and it was something that stood out because he forgot her name. So uh, so joining me today is my sister, Lisa. Hi, everybody. I can't keep track of your last name. I know. I've been married. and. Do you want to pull the microphone a little closer? Yeah, yeah, I can do pull, that. Pull it real close and talk right into it. Like that? Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah what, what's your last name now? Well, now it's, it's Pool. pool. Now okay, it's, it's Pool again. Pool. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it's back to Pool. So joining me today so is my- It is his sister, by the way. Um, so I'm going to click on the video and just see how long it is. I might just watch the clips because Rod kind of has them. Yeah, it's pretty long. So let's just watch the uh, clips that Rod shared. Uh, one thing that I will give Tim Pool credit for is bringing on one of your siblings is a pretty alpha move. I would never do that for one because I'm worried that my siblings would embarrass me um, and tell like some stupid story about when I was a baby because I'm the youngest, right? So all of my siblings uh, were almost adults by the time I was born. So they could tell some fucked up childhood story and embarrass me. So I would not do that. So I do give Tim Pool credit uh, for uh, bringing on his sister. Regardless, though, I do want to see what she has to say about him because she has some stories that kind of prove that Tim Pool is an egomaniac. I mean, I don't necessarily think these revelations are surprising, but nonetheless, they are pretty interesting to me. And again, I respect her so much for calling him out for what he said because that did bother me as much as... I think Tim Pool is a bit of a grifter. Um, I didn't think that he was as bad as the other far right, far right individuals. I mean, the difference between Tim Pool and Matt Walsh is like night and day. So when I saw him say that about the grooming at Club Q with no evidence, I actually was disappointed because as much as I don't agree with Tim Pool, I thought he was better than these other folks. I mean, at a minimum, he brings on leftists, right? Matt Bender, Vosh. So that alone, I think, is cause for a little bit of respect. But overall, this whole notion that he's more reasonable kind of flew out the window with that moment. But let's listen to what she has to say. Last year, October, some stuff happened. And uh, I had to just up and go. I, I just, I was living here in Illinois. And um, my two kids and I just, we had to find somewhere to live fast. And, which means I had to find a job. I had to find a place to live with my kids. It was all very, I got the rug pulled out from under me. I'm screwed. Uh, I need help. Tim calls me out of nowhere. And he's like, well, come to West Virginia. And I said, I'd rather not do that. I just needed, I just needed a boost. Like, I just needed help for, like, a first month's rent in depo and a deposit. That's it. I don't need any other money. That was it. I just needed that. And if he couldn't help me, I'd have to find something else. I'd go away, probably go to a women's shelter. But it was weird. And so, and I didn't want to put my kids through that. So, he told me that he would not contribute to a slave state. He did not want to give me any money because he did not want to contribute to a slave state. Leaving me like, shit, that means I had to go to a homeless shelter. So I did it. I went out there. I was out there in October of last year and I stayed out there for about three, four months. I went in there and I did my duty and I cleaned it up and I think I did a really great job. 
And then um, I walk into Tim standing here next to his girlfriend. I think Chris might have been there. But there was a girl that works there or worked there who answered the phones and did the emails. And she's such a sweetheart. She was she did a lot of work. She was very, very cool chick. She was like a personal assistant to him, pretty much. She did a lot. Thank you so much, um, T Bet. I, I really appreciate you saying that. Too, don't get me wrong, but this girl did like she did a lot. Well Tim was yelling at her kinda. And I was like, Oh my god, this is really awkward and I was like, Tim, what? And he then said, Leave Lisa. I said leave. I was like so upset. Or like sitting, like I had my head on my steering wheel, like, why did I even accept this offer? I don't want to come all the way here. I had to drive 12 hours with my kids in the car, throwing up every 20 minutes to a half hour. I put my top, I have a two and a five year old, I had to put them through that. And I tried having a talk with them and I said, Tim, you got to stop doing that. I said, be a leader, not a boss. Hmm. Yeah, I don't get what slave state means. I don't know what he means by that. Uh, by the way, the audio isn't very good. I have it cranked on Streamlabs, but she's kind of talking away from her phone and she's doing the dishes, so I apologize. Uh, I have it, like, maxed out, but it is kind of hard to hear. Um, okay. So, uh, Tim disallowed singing Happy Birthday within his dystopian compound. Um, when Lisa tried to gift Tim a photo of them as kids, he asked, Why would I hang that on the wall? That's so weird. After that, I remember it was that same girl. It was her birthday. And we actually did an episode on it on the Cast Castle. Everybody was there except him. When I said, Tim, we're going to sing happy birthday to her. Do you want to come join in? I made her a cake. He said, no. No. He wouldn't even let us sing in the green room in the area where all the guests hang out. And this was like, like I, I don't think he had any a podcast that night. So we, um... Or it might have been before his show. He was watching. He was too busy watching the movie Don't Look Up. On Netflix. I'm glad he watched that. So finally, the last see show, that. I got I got tired of it. Um, I made him. I didn't know this was gonna happen. I made these pictures for him. I had them in these frames. My mom had them. They were pictures of uh, pictures of us skating. I was at the skate park when we were teenagers in uh, Burbank, Illinois, and my mom took them because she used to be into photography. So it's all of us. I'm in some of them. And I thought, you know what? This would be a really nice thing to put in the house to make it look like friendly. I mean, you know, maybe you know, it'll be nice because he has skaters come here. Maybe we can hang out in the skate park. So I went. I got the pictures from my mom's photo album. I found a bunch of 5 by 7 and 4 by 6 frames. And uh, I framed them. And I brought them to the house, to the cast castle. Well, when I brought them to Allison, she, she said, Tim said no. And I was like, oh, that's a bummer, you know? And and look, I tried to make these pictures because I thought, you know, Tim and I didn't didn't really have a close relationship already. So I thought maybe this would be something that I can do for him to, like, just help us bring us closer together. I didn't, I don't listen to his podcast really. I'm not really political. But I just wanted to be there to support him. To just be there and be his sister and be supportive. And um, so because he said no to the pictures... I thought I'd have a talk with him in, privately in his little, like, living area. And I said, Tim, hey, how come you don't want them hung up in the house? Maybe I can help you hang them up in your in your place, you know? And he said, why would I hang up pictures of people I haven't spoken to in 16 years, Lisa? Why would I do that? That was his response. You know uh, what? My eyes welled up with tears. I felt like I was going to cry my ass out. It really, it was hurtful. That's, that's really cold-hearted, honestly. Um, if he, if he, for example, shot down recommendations where she's like, okay, can I put these pictures in the skate park? Sure. You could say, well, maybe not in the skate park. That doesn't really match the vibe, but you know, this is such a sweet gesture, but to be a dick about it and say, why would I hang those up? That's really mean because very clearly she's trying to do something sweet and build a relationship and he just shoots her down. Um, that's, that's kind of sad. That makes me sad more than anything. Um, she explains how uh, she knew Tim Poole was no longer her brother. Tim made Lisa's daughter cry because she was using his video game equipment. Then Tim tried to disallow Lisa from trying to comfort her own daughter. That is where you can kind of get a sense of, okay, this dude is super controlling. Which it's, I mean, look, before I listen to what she has to say, if her two-year-old is, you know, 
rubbing her boogers on my PlayStation 5 controller, I can understand why that would be bad. And I would say, hey, listen, maybe we can play something else or do something different than that. I don't, I don't, I don't want the kids playing with this. Um, but then to make her cry, that's, that's strange. And then to disallow your sister from comforting her daughter is very strange behavior to me. Like, again, as, as a video gamer, if you're a really little kid, I don't want you touching my stuff, right? But if you're like five, it's, if it's her older kid, the five-year-old, I think it'd be cool to have them play video games. Like my nephew, when he was young, I would let him play video games. I, I would try to help him and teach him how to play. Same with my niece as well. I'd let her play monkey ball because all you had to do was like move the uh, joystick and, you know, I put on easy levels for her and she gets so excited. But, so it depends on the circumstances, but like still very strange situation overall. And that was, that was when I knew. He wasn't my brother anymore. He's just different. So after that, I, uh, it, was, it wasn't, he wasn't 100% the reason why I left. That was part of it. I, I wasn't happy. My, I, my kids, they weren't happy there at all. Um, Interesting. I, it's like, I just, I wanted to be there, but I just couldn't. I just couldn't do it. We'll take a so, look at that in a sec, Gamer listen, G. I, I'm completely grateful that Tim helped me out in a bind 100%. I mean, it was really great of him. And I don't want to just make this video just to shit on my brother. I do love him, but hey, he's not him anymore. I I think, and like I said on Adam's thing. I feel like she is confirming my theory that having money just melts your brain. Like if you get rich, you leave your body in a sense and you like become this different person like capitalism is a ruthless fucking system so i mean like if you go from being just just this regular person to becoming a multi multi-millionaire as i assume tim pool is that probably changes you you know it changes your your brain it feels like people who are in the spotlight and are rich long enough they ultimately end up going to the dark side like every single hero who i've had be it a rapper or an actor has at some point disappointed me. And I think that just having money and being rich for so long rots the fuck out of your brain. So I think that's what's happening here. And she's kind of describing that here. But it is sad. She seems like a genuinely good person. And you could tell she doesn't want to say this about her brother. But she is sharing her experience. She's venting. And I think that it's worthwhile for her to share this. He has a lot of influence. So, you know, this information I think is important. It is in the public's interest. Um... I think he needs to take a step back and really look at the person he's become because he's not that person anymore. That's a fair thing to say. I mean, I know him and I weren't close already, you know? So, it just sucks because the, the, the Tim that I knew, at least the, the Tim that I somewhat, like, you know, had some kind of relationship with, just, damn, this is a different Tim. I don't know. It's crazy. So, anyways, um, so fast forward to... Uh, I, I tell Tim and Allison, you know what? The situation has changed. I have a way to go back to Illinois where my kids can be happy in the house. I was able to go, come back. It was, things worked out really well and um, for my kids. And uh, I didn't, I, I know Tim said my kids were welcome in his house. It didn't really feel that way. For instance, um, there was a time when <laughs> right, my sorry. five-year-old daughter she was playing on his, he has a little arcade thing with a joystick. And she was, she was playing with the arcade joystick thing. And um, she was wrenching out a little bit. So Tim said, hey, can you get her off of that? She's going to break it. She started throwing a temper tantrum. And um, I couldn't, I couldn't really get a handle on it. I was trying. Um, I wanted to, my daughter was laying flat on the rug covering her face. She was scared. I went to go comfort her and Tim yelled at me not to. First off, it's not his kid. That's so weird. Um, okay. Yeah, I can't really sympathize with Tim here. Because I have a tiny little arcade machine. Um, and whenever the kids come over, I encourage them to play with it. That's why it's there. Um, you know, and, you know, if they're a little bit hard on it, it's fine. Like, you can replace the joysticks. Um, but I mean, if look, if he's protective of his things... That's fine. I don't think that that inherently makes him a bad person. The response, however, is weird when you tell the mother not to comfort them. And look, if the kid is being too hard on the joystick, you, like you could, like you're an uncle, right? As an uncle, you have to say, hey, 
maybe you don't maybe you don't do that just do it this way like it's about trying to teach them right because kids don't necessarily know but to like bark at your sister for trying to comfort her daughter as she's throwing a temper tantrum i do find that really weird but i i don't necessarily think this makes tim a bad person you can tell he just very clearly isn't comfortable around kids and i get it um but it just you know he isn't filling in that role as uncle very well uh you know other than giving them money but it's more you know if you want to cultivate a relationship with the kids you've got to try to get to know them you know teach them things if they're being too hard on the on the arcade machine then teach them teach them how to play normally i don't go do that and i'm like why should, why and he's like because that's what mom would do mom would tell you to ignore the, the behavior so i i was like what i was like yeah because mom did such a bang up job and he goes <laughs> I'm a fucking millionaire. He said that in front of all of his employees. It was disgusting. Okay. He seems to believe that money equals value inherently, but I'm sorry. Money doesn't inherently make you a better person or a more valuable person. The difference is money. That's it. We're all still human beings. We all still fart. We shit. We eat. Um, so you can tell that the money has gone to his head. That's like the biggest takeaway for me here. So she explains how he accused Lisa of being the swatter because he was swatted. And um, that's that's certainly uh, not okay, the swatting. But he thinks his sister did the swatting. That's really weird to me. I, I couldn't get out of that place fast enough. So I, I packed up my stuff. I got a pod. Paid for it myself and I left. Came back to Illinois. So I'm back in Illinois. And I'm happy. I'm here. I'm I'm here in Illinois. And um, I, you know, it's, things are great. It is, money does prevent you from going to heaven, apparently, media, Super Jack guy. Who used to work for him. We're going to call her Shmashmina. So her and I, we talk, and um, Tim ends up finding out that we were talking. And at the same time, he's getting swatted like crazy. Tim messages me and says, Call me now. He was like, well, the FBI or the cops are on the way to my house right now. You need to talk to me. And I'm like, fine. So I call him. I'm like, fine. What do you want, Tim? And he immediately, the first thing out of his mouth is, why are you talking to Shashmina? And I was like, what? And he started yelling at me, raising his voice, saying I was a fucking idiot in front of my children. Dude, I didn't know. The whole time that my 13 year old recorded it. So I told him and I was like, actually, you're friends with her on Facebook. After he was screaming at me, um, I didn't send her the video, but I didn't, because I, I had a copy of this video where Tim is so screaming in a, such an abusive matter, manner. He was accusing her of being the swatter and me being the swatter. Um, I, I sent her a link unlisted, not a copy of it. So, you know, and her and I were listening it together and she's like, oh my God, I can't believe he's yelling you that way. And I'm like, I know, right? This, this is like insane. Little did I know she recorded the video. Yeah. And I can't release that video. I know you guys want to see it and hear it and all that stuff. I can't. My kids are in the car. My friend's kid is in the car. They're talking in the video. There's children in it. So I, I can't, I can't release it. Wow. And uh, after, after she recorded it, I was like... She can, I say in the video, I'm like, oh my god, I'm like shaking, you know, because he, the way he spoke to me, it's like he was interrogating me like he was a cop. It was like crazy. And then 12 hours later from that phone call, he accused me of being the swatter. He told me that she was the swatter, which is, wasn't true because I have a friend of mine, uh, we had a mutual friend that lived in LA and had just gone hiking with her and Tim claimed that she, this Shashmina was in Maryland swatting him and it wasn't true at all. And then 12 hours later, he accused me of being the swatter. His own sister. I'm like, really, man? Come on. So, after that, um, I, uh, I'm like, man. Tim, Tim continued to blow up my phone like 10 times in a row. And then uh, I talked to Chris. And I told Chris that, you know, it was recorded by his niece, my daughter. You know, and Chris, I guess, told Tim... And Tim blew my phone up again 12 times. I was on my way home from the park with my kids. And Tim blew my phone up. was like, really scary. And then he blew my phone up again from another phone number. Like, he has, like, a bunch of phones, I guess. 
And instead of, so I know he really wanted to talk to me. That is not I okay didn't wanna, behavior. And Chris called me. And Chris was like, talk to Tim. He wants to talk to you. And I was like, no. Not after the way he spoke to me. No, not at all. I am not going through that shit again. It was just really condescending and it was scary. And I'm not, I, I can't, I just can't talk to him. He doesn't know how to talk to people. And, um. I kind of get that. So, uh. You can kind of tell. Next thing I know, Tim sends me a text message saying, we are filing federal criminal, federal charges against you. No, hey, Lise, it's Tim. Please talk to me. I'm really sorry. No, it was that. So, yeah. And look, I know I'm probably never going to have a relationship with my brother again or my mother. Or for Chris, you know. Or with Chris. I don't know. And it really sucks. But you know what? I'm okay with that. So I know a lot of you were like, oh, how can his sister do that to him by making a video and... That's why. I just, you know what? I am much happier that they're not in my life. So the bridge is burnt, basically. And she's kind of describing what seems to be a bit of abusive behavior by Tim Pole. Seems like he has like a weird little, not necessarily a cult, but he's very controlling, seemingly, and yelling and demanding and super cocky and arrogant. Um... And it's kind of sad. I don't think that our family could ever be uh, repaired, but she's happy she walked away from Tim's money, unlike other family members. Um, Lisa's too busy being a mom to pay attention to politics or listen to her brother's show, but we did talk before I posted this. Okay, so she did talk to Rod Weber. Interesting. Um, so, yeah, folks, I think we'll, we'll wrap it there. Uh, he said um, I do feel really sorry for uh, for her. It seems like she is a good person, and it seems like he changed the money changed him which that does happen and just kind of became this giant asshole and his head got really big and he treated everyone like a boss like he was their boss because he is a boss so family members he's the boss sister he's the boss he's not the uncle to her children he's the boss um and that's not a way to foster healthy relationships <laughs>